despise his words and you misuse his prophets. And now the wrath of God is abiding upon the children of disobedience and your destruction cometh. So he's going to turn his sights. He's going to send the beast and the beast. And you find this in many of the prophets like Zechariah 12 and 14. And it says the nations. Here's how it's worded there. And the nations will march against Jerusalem. And that city will be taken. And their houses rifled and their women ravished. And it goes on to describe some of the horrors of it. And then you get over to the second chapter of Joel. And his words are so descriptive that if you've ever rattled around on the Internet and gone on YouTube and looked at some of those clips of the North Korean army or the Chinese army, you're going to understand what Joel was permitted to see if you look at that. His words are so scary and so descriptive. And here's the one theme that all the prophets and at Matthew 24, the Lord Jesus Christ also says that that affliction at that hour upon Jerusalem is going to be the worst affliction ever in this earth from the beginning of the creation to that day or ever will be again. Translated, that means the Holocaust, the destruction of Jerusalem under Titus the Great in 70 AD, the Babylonian captivity, the destruction of the ten tribes under the Assyrian war machine, merciless war machine. That's all going to look like a pinky out tea party by the time this matter is settled. Those words are graphic. Over, I'm telling you, you just got to read Joel 2. That's some scary stuff going on right there. But then, oh, and by the way, there's about 14 million Jews living in this world today. There's going to be a lot of dead Jews, but there's not going to be all dead Jews. Those that are alive, that remnant, that 144,000 are going to be scattered throughout this earth. And then it says God is going to do two really amazing things. The first one is that in the midst of that affliction, he's going to pour out. And let me just real quick posture a question to help you understand what this is. Have you ever noticed that you get the most serious about God and eternity and hell and heaven and all those matters? Sobriety, really, when you are in great affliction. It puts a perspective on your life. It puts all your nonsense to the side. So in the midst 